Sir, can you turn your mic on? There we go. Hey, you can keep it on all day now. Okay, yeah. I am, I am just getting over a bit of bronchitis. Sure. I hope I can get through can these instructions. Uh, I'm okay, but you know how these, these doggone dry coughs, they, they last for weeks, and if I trigger okay. that yeah. spasm, I'm gonna have I to am, have some I help. I am just getting over a little bit of bronchitis. <laughs> I hope I can get through these instructions. Uh, I'm okay, but you know how these, these yeah. doggone dry coughs, they, they last for weeks, and if I trigger. Okay, Are we, did we get rid of that? We're okay, okay. Uh, information concerning the following agenda items is available thank you, <clears throat> for public consideration during normal working hours at the Resource Management Agency Permit Center, 5961 South Mooney Boulevard, Visalia, California. The staff will assist in answering questions. For further information about the Planning Commission, see last page. All public hearings are scheduled for certain times and as soon uh, thereafter as the matter can be heard. All non-timed items will be considered following the public hearing or when time permits. Persons wishing to speak on any of the agenda items who have made a political contribution of more than $250 to any commissioner in the last 12 months must indicate this when speaking. To join the meeting by Zoom, enter the Zoom webinar ID 982-7528-0567 and password 339079 to use the QR code below. <clears throat> During the meeting, uh, to provide public comment, use the Q&A feature and provide your name and agenda uh, item number. To, to join the meeting by telephone, dial 669-900-9128, enter the webinar ID 982-7528-0567 and password 339079. Uh, to provide public comment by telephone, press star nine to raise your hand and star six to mute and or unmute when called upon. <clears throat> you will be connected to the conference room to address the planning commission in the same manner as if you were here in person. Please state your name and address for the record to be heard by everyone in the room. Your statements will go out on a live video stream and will be indicated or included in the uh, audio recording of, uh, <coughs> recording of the Tillery County main page website. Under state law matters presented under this item agenda, appearing on the agenda, the public will be invited to make comments at the time the item comes up for planning commission consideration. So that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak any person addressing the Planning Commission may be limited to the discretion of the chair. That would be me. Note, in order uh, to consider the Planning Commission testimony on public hearing items must be given at the time scheduled for the public hearing. As a courtesy to those in attendance, please turn off or place uh, in alert mode all cell phones in compliance with the Americans with the Disability Act if you need special assistance to participate in this meeting, please contact the Resource Management Agency at 559-624-7000. Roll call, please. Good morning. Commissioners Dennis Lehman and Gil Aguilar notified us that they would be absent today. McElroy? Millies? Here. Brown? Here. Diaz? Here. Whitlatch? Here. Aliman? Here. Okay, let's uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, we're going to move on to item number two, which is the public comment. Uh, at this time, members of the public may comment on any item not appearing on the agenda. If you wish to participate in today's public comment via Zoom or webinar, including listings to the meeting, listening to the meetings and uh, providing public comment, 
please enter the Zoom webinar ID 982-7528-0567 and password 339079 or use the QR code. You will be connected to the boardroom uh, to address the Planning commission, commission in the same manner as if you were here in person. Please state your name and address for the record to be heard by everyone in the room. Your statement will go out on the live audio stream and will be included in the audio recording of the meeting. This meeting can be viewed at the Planning Commission meet, uh, Commission's meetings Tulare County main page website. Under state law, matters presented under this item cannot be discussed or acted upon by the Planning Commission at this time. For items appearing on the agenda, the public will be invited to make comments at the time the items come up for Planning Commission consideration. So that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak, any person addressing the Planning Commission may be limited to the discretion of the Chair. Uh, in order uh, to be considered by the Planning Commission testimony on public hearings, items must be given at the time scheduled for public hearing. Uh, is there anyone that would like to provide testimony to us today on something that is not on the, the agenda today? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move into item three, approval of the minutes. This would be to approve the minutes for November 9th, uh, 2022 Planning Commission. This is Wayne Millies. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from December 14th, 2022. Commissioner Brown, second. Okay. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. <clears throat> Aliman? Yes. Motion passed five to zero. All right. Moving on to item four, uh, parcel map <clears throat> public hearings. Action on all parcel maps in this section of the agenda will be heard in one public hearing unless anyone wishing to discuss any one of these items requests that it be pulled for a separate public hearing. No staff presentation will be given on any items unless requested. In any case, there will be a separate vote on these items. If you wish to participate in today's public comment uh, via Zoom webinar, including listening to the meetings and providing public comment, please enter the Zoom webinar ID 982-7528-0567 and password 339079. You'll be connected to the boardroom to address the Planning Commission in the same manner as if you were here in person. Please state your name and address for the record to be heard by everyone in the room. Your statements will, be, will go out on a live audio stream and will be included in the audio recording of the meeting. The timer will be set at three minutes, so please adhere to the time limit. Uh, is there any of these items that need to be pulled or anybody need to recuse themselves on or something? Okay, then we will go item by item. Each will have its own um, uh, action on it. We've got item A as a tentative parcel map number PPM. 22-022. Open, open the public hearing. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Just, was, the, the, yeah. Don't I to tell them what we're talking about first? Uh, no, open the public oh, hearing. Oh, for, for the whole for, section. For the whole section. Ah, and gotcha. then if nobody gonna, comes up here. Gotcha. Close all right. So then, uh, so there. this is a public uh, testimony time for any item uh, uh, on the uh, uh, parcel map public hearings. That would be idle item A, B. C, D, E, F, G. And if anybody would like to make any comment on any of those items, please come up. Uh, tell us the name and address and which item that uh, uh, you want to talk about. Okay. Seeing uh, now I'll move forward to uh, the commission here and uh, we will look for uh, uh, the, uh, let's see, Number eight, tentative parcel map PPM 22-00, no, dash 022. Um, categorical exemption for a tentative parcel map PPM 22-022 for a division of 41.27 gross acres into two parcels. Parcel one is a 20 acre, uh, 20 gross acres, and parcel two is 21.27 gross acres and an AE20 
exclusive ag 20 acre minimum zone. The site is located on a southwest corner of Avenue 200 and Road 204 northeast of Plainview. Any discussions or motions? This is Wayne Millies. I'll make an, uh, a recommendation that we approve a categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14 California Code Regulations, Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversion of small structures and conditionally approved tentative parcel map number PPM 22-022 and waiver of final map. This is Bill Whitlatch. I'll second that motion. Roll call. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aguilar? Aliman? Yes. Motion passed 5 to 0. Okay. Item B is a tentative parcel map number PPM 22 023. Uh, Thomas J. O'Sullivan and Deborah O'Sullivan uh, in AW, with AW Engineering. This would be a categorical exemption for a tentative parcel map number PPM 22-023 for a division of 37.06 acres, uh, a sectional 40, into uh, two parcels. Parcel 1 and 18.58 acres, and parcel 2 is an 18.53 acres in an AE20 exclusively 20-acre uh, minimum zone. Uh, the site is located on the southwest corner of Avenue 138 and Road 240 in Porterville. Uh, any discussion? This is Commissioner Alamon. I uh, motion to approve a categorical ex exception exemption consistent with the California Environment Environmental Quality Act and the state sequel guidelines pursuant to Title 14. Cal Code Rel Regulation Section 15315, Class 115, pertaining to minor land divisions in urbanized areas and conditionally approved tentative parcel map number PPM 22 023. Bill Whitlatch, I'll second that motion. Roll call. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed 5 to 0. Okay. Item C on this uh, section here is a tentative parcel map. Um, uh, this would be for a categorical exemption uh, for a tentative parcel map on PPM 22 024 to divide one. Uh, 103,672 square foot parcel, which is 2.38 acres into two parcels, one uh, 56,197 square feet, second parcel at 47,480 square feet in an RA 43 uh, rural residential 43,000 square foot minimum zone. The site is located on the east side of Anderson Avenue, uh, approximately 940 feet south of Avenue 280 west of Exeter. Any discussion here? Uh, this is Commissioner Brown. I move to approve a categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act CEQA and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14 California Code Regulations Section 15315 Class 15 pertaining to minor land division in urbanized areas and conditionally approved tentative parcel map PPM 22024. Bill Whitlatch, I'll second that motion. Roll call. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed 5 to 0. Okay. Um, <clears throat> item D is a uh, Categorical exemption for a tentative parcel map number PPM 22-029 to divide one 198.37 acre parcel into two parcels. Parcel one is 10.32, 
acres in parcel two is 188.05 acres in the PDFM, which is a planned development foothill combined special mobile home zone. The site is located on the east side of Dry Creek Road, approximately three miles north of State Highway 216, north of Lemon Cove. Any comments? Pardon? Any discussion? Motion? No. This is Commissioner Alamon. I would motion to approve a categorical exemption, exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulation Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversions of small structures, and conditionally approve tentative parcel map number PPM 22029PSR. <coughs> and waiver of the final map. Bill Whitlatch, I'll second that motion. Roll call. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Okay, moving on to item E on this. This would be for a categorical exemption and tentative parcel map for uh, number PPM 22-033 <coughs> to divide a 40.27 acre parcel into two parcels. Parcel one is one acre, parcel two is 39.27 acres with a final map waiver in an AE20 exclusive 20 acre minimum zone. The site is located at 20222 Avenue 332 <coughs> Woodlake, California, 93286. <coughs> Wayne Millies, I make a recommendation that we approve a categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14 California Code Regulations, Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversion of existing structures and conditionally approve tentative parcel map number PPM 22-033. Bill Whitlatch, I'll second that motion. Roll call. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Okay, let's see. We're on G now, right? Or did I lose position? Uh, F? Yeah, G. We're on F now? Okay. F, F. I changed the page and lost, lost my spot. <clears throat> All right. This would be uh, item F. Uh, it would be for a categorical exemption and tentative parcel map number PPM 22-035 to divide a 38.7 acre parcel into two parcels. Parcel one would be two acres and parcel number two would be 36.7 acres with a final map waiver in the AE20 exclusive 20 acre minimum zone. The site is located at 34109 Road 158 by Sally, California. Nine three two nine two. Motion. This is Commissioner Brown. I move to approve categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental <coughs> Quality Act, CEQA, and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulations, Section 15303, pertaining to new construction or conversion of existing structures and conditionally approved tentative parcel map number PPM 22035. I'll second that motion. Bill Whitlatch. Roll call. <coughs> Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed 5 to 0. <coughs> okay, item G is a categorical exemption for a tentative parcel map. PPM 22-037 to divide 96.21 acre parcel in an AE40 exclusive AG 40 acre minimum and M1 light industry zones. The site is located at 30030 Road 60 near Goshen. Do I have a motion or a discussion? This is Commissioner Aleman. I motion to approve a categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, 
California Code Regulation Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversions of small structures, and conditionally approve tentative parcel map number PPM22-037 with an exep exemption, exception and final map waiver. Bill Whitlatch, I'll second that motion. Roll call. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed 5 to 0. Uh, for the public, it may have looked like we just ran these through here without much discussion, but these were parcel splits that were allowed by right in that zoning. So it's just a matter of going through the steps of, of doing that. So these were vetted by the staff and everything is done properly on it. So it's not just, you know, going through here doing rubber stamp and everything. Okay. Now we're getting into the public hearing parts. This is uh, <clears throat> item five here, public hearings. Uh, to members of the public, if you wish to participate in today's public comment via Zoom webinar, please enter the Zoom webinar ID 982-7528-0567 and password 339079. We will be connected, you will be connected to the boardroom to address the planning commission in the same manner as if you were here in person. Please state your name and address for the record and be to be heard by everyone in the room. Your statements will go out on a live audio stream and will be included in the audio recording of the meeting. The timer will be set at three minutes. So please adhere to the time limit. That concludes the instructions for today's public hearing. And public uh, here 5A, this would be a special use permit number PSP 21-0-114, uh, Stett Sisters Corporation. Uh, and our contact today is uh, Russ, Russ Kish Kishaw Kishawa. Uh, good enough. <laughs> Uh, so, I'm sorry, sir. <coughs> no, it's fine. Uh, good morning, Chairman Diaz, fellow commissioners. My name is Russell Kashua, and I work for the Tulare County Resource Management Agency Pro uh, Project Processing Division. Before you today is special use permit number PSP 21-114. Um, this is the vicinity map. The subject site is bisected by Mountain Road 99 and approximately 4.5 miles north of County Line Road north of Kernville, APN numbers are 328 021 022, and 023. These are the aerial and existing zoning maps. Um, I do want to point out that uh, GIS was a little bit off in marking the uh, territory. The lines are a little bit south of where they should be. Um, so um, we're the, there's like a boomerang-shaped house up in the northwest corner, that's the um, Coral Creek Lodge. The subject site is right to the west of that, so that's where we'll be located, so not where uh, the lines show on GIS. Um, so the subject site is located within the A1 agricultural zone and contains a mobile home hub, 100 amp electrical panel, septic tank leach line system, well, well house, mandated by the Coral Creek Resort. The water supply will utilize the existing water system from the Coral Creek Resort assigned CA 54031116. The Coral Creek, Lo uh, Coral Creek Resort under PSP 99-086 was approved by the Tulare County Planning Commission on April 11th, 2001 as resolution number 7883 and recorded on September 12th, 2001. This is the site plan. The applicant is requesting to allow the construction of a seasonal campground with 21 cabin tents on wooden decks and platforms, bathroom facilities and showers, two fire pits and 20 on-site parking spaces on a seven acre portion of the three parcels which total 13.77 acres. The applicant proposes to operate seven days a week from the months of March through November. Entitlement is found in section 16, part 2B of the Tulare County Zoning Ordinance as amended, which allows for a campground in the A1 zone, provided that a special use permit be approved. Can I interrupt you for just a minute? I, yes. I can't read the little letters. What's the little dotted line? Is that a road, a landscape area? What is that? Uh, that, that is the road. 
That is the road. Yes. And it crosses the highway, right? Uh, yes. So the Coral Creek uh, Resort is to the east of the road, and then the proposed cabins are going to be to the west of the road. Okay. And does the... Uh, I, I, go, I never go all the way up that road, but is that a fairly high traffic area or? Mm, I don't believe so, but I'm not entirely sure. I think that's a fairly accurate statement, especially since it's closed right now. <laughs> okay. So a public notice for the project was mailed out to the surrounding property owners and published in the Exeter Sun Gazette with a 13-day public comment period before today's planning commission. Prior to the hearing notification being sent out, staff has received seven letters of concern and nine requests to be notified of the public hearing and one letter in support. Uh, staff has emailed public notice to, to, of the hearing to all nine persons expressing to be notified of this public hearing on November 16, 2022. In addition, a physical copy was mailed out on November 23, 2022. Staff was also informed of a typo of the public hearing notices that the date as comment period ending on December 12th, 2020 and a hearing date of December 14th as 2020. Staff sent out notifications to each interested person of the typo and inf informed them of the correct comment period of the ending date and the public hearing date. Um, after publication of the agenda item on the county website and submitting the agenda packet to the Planning Commission, 13 additional letters of concern have been received. Uh, each individual that submitted a comment after publication with posted will send a notification of today's hearing date and time, and as well as their comments that will, was printed out physically and brought here today, which I do have um, right here with me and I will pass out to you. Um, so this ends staff report. Um, uh, we do have a representative um, from the campground here today uh, to be able, if you have any questions for them as well. Thank you, Russell. <clears throat> Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Hector Guerra, Chief Thank Environmental you. Planner, Resource Management Agency. And uh, as Russell pointed out, we did receive some comment letters. Um, uh, many of them contained comments regarding the California Environmental Quality Act. So as such, I wanted to come up here and give a, a brief presentation. Uh, when we receive notifications that someone is, is, is contesting you know, our determination that a categorical exemption uh, is not sufficient uh, and someone is asking for an environmental impact report or uh, whatever a higher document uh, you know we base that on what we call substantial evidence you know essentially prove it and uh, we believe that in our categorical exemption discussion that's included as part of the agenda packet that we provided our sources of where we obtained our information you know it's not just something well I used to live up there it's kind of like I looked at this database or I looked at this bonafide information source, so this is where we get our, our information from. Some of it may be derived from our general plan, which uh, also included an environmental impact report, so you know, it, it's, it's like these are the facts. So I'm not going to go into the, uh, a debate on the issues that were, were brought up, but I also want to remind the Commission and those who uh, view these things that uh, a categorical exemption does not mean that they're entirely exempt from having to comply with other regulatory or our agencies rules regulations standards thresholds whatever you want to call it you know a permit uh, they do have to comply with everybody's so you you you're, it's not a clean slate you know they have to say uh, environmental health you have to put in a, 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 a engineered septic system uh, the air district if you're going to build something a certain size you have to comply with their rules Cal Fish and Wildlife, if you're going to do something along that may impact wildlife, then you got to comply with the rules. So it's not, you know, just like, oh, they're not going to do anything. That's not the case at all. Uh, in it, I, I do want to make a, a correction for someone who provided comments. And I, I appreciate the comments. You know, you, you're out there or you live by it or you're frequent in enough. And, you know, we, we take those into consideration when we, when we do our uh, determinations. Uh, someone pointed out an environmental impact statement at EIS. Uh, that's inaccurate. You know, it's, it would, it, if, it were to be an environmental document, it would be an environmental impact report. We have that jurisdiction out there, so it is our, uh, within our purview to be the, the lead agency. So that, that's all I really wanted to do, just remind everybody of that, you know, that we believe our determination at this juncture is, is based on substantial evidence, and I believe Mr. Bach wanted to add a few more items too. 
Isn't that the same road that goes to, uh, there's a prison camp up there, a work camp? Uh, I'm actually not too sure. I didn't see that. I know there are other campgrounds up there, but as far as a prison camp, I'm not sure. Is, uh, is, this, is, that, is this area uh, a public, gr uh, public grounds that people can access and camp anytime they want? Or is uh, this the, all private property? It, it is private property, but the campground said that they would be open between March and November, so that's when the guests would be allowed to be there. Okay. So this is really the Balch Park Road. Because uh, I heard Aaron say it was closed, so. Well, on the other side. On the other not, side. Not, not on this side. This is on the, okay. Yeah. This is the road you take, goes past the big barn, correct? Uh, I believe so. Uh, Springville? Well, yeah. when somebody comes up, I'll ask the lady, so. Okay, uh, is that it, uh, Russell, for the staff report? Okay. No. Uh, did, did you want to say something here? Uh, no, not at this time. Okay, okay, yes, then that, that concludes. Okay. Then we'll open up the uh, <clears throat> public uh, testimony portion of the hearing at this point. Is there anybody that would like to uh, uh, speak could probably start with the applicant. Please provide your name and address uh, for um, the, uh, the. My name is Carrie McComas. I'm the camp host at SoCal Camping. Uh, and um, can't hear. Is there a way we could just talk over the mask a little bit? There yeah, we go. You bet. <laughs> yeah. Say your name again, please. Carrie McComas. Okay. I'm the host of the camp in, in question. Um, I've been there for three years. And we have um, followed all the safety and guidelines for our guests. My, my job is to make sure everybody's accommodated and, and happy and um, all our tents and everything is, is ready to go for our guests who keep coming back and back every chance they can get. Um, Well, I take it you've been operating without a permit. Is that what, what, why we're here? That's what we found out. Okay. Um, we did not know. We're, um, it's, we do have to work on that open communication. Um, but uh, um, all accommodations for our guests on the grounds and are, are very safe. We have followed every guidelines from inspections that we, that we have had so far. Um, we have... We have a lot to do at the camp. We have a lot of things to fix, especially the berms that he had moved a lot of dirt. But we do have um, path pathways, rock pathways. We safety issue. We have um, a, the the cleanest campground in the area. Put it that way, in around our area, in the what's in the, within a mile. We have two campgrounds below us and one above us, and those are BLM and ours is the, is the cleanest. We keep up on it, me and my girls that we have, I have working for us. It's a number one thing with fire permits, even though it's a private property, we insist that, that um, they follow all guidelines and rules. There's no, we have never had any com, um, police on, on the property. We've always had um, a good repertoire with the Coral Creek across the street. And um, we share the tank house and the water um, we haven't had any spills or anything like that, and it's it's a wonderful place. It's beautiful, it's clean, and people love it, and they keep coming back. But it's the dirt that was moved. I understand that, and that was uh, out of my control because it was the owners at the time. But I have pictures to prove the uh, that you can see the improvements. Um, but other than that. Good. Explain again, uh, this dirt was moved. What was the issue? He now? was trying to make a, a private, more privacy on the, on the campground. So he moved the, the dirt up along the, the road edge. Well, for the last three years, I've been topping it down and bringing it down and bringing it down because we have no green up there because everything up there is seasonal and the indigenous plants. So we have, I have made sure that it's been watered down, compacted down. It's starting to come down a little bit from the height, per se. Um, we have been moving plants and trying to get it to stay in the general area. We've never had anything runoff from water. Um, on our driveway, which is directly across the street from Corral Creek, um, we've, um, we keep it very well maintained. I have a, a spillway that goes into a sandy bottom, 
and um, that's where like where the rain runs off into. Um, we have a working and inspected septic tank for our bathrooms. We have four, two bathrooms and the showers, and um, those are all up to par. You know, we're just waiting for inspections on those. But otherwise, it's very nice, very clean, very, it's a wonderful place. And when you come out of your, your tents, you're just looking at the beautiful mountains. And we do have jet airlines, the jet fighters going across above us too, but that's not a hindrance to the guests, mm -hmm. but it is loud. Okay. But other than that. Any um, questions? Uh, No, we are closed down right Miss, now until we get one. Can you turn your mic on? I'm sorry. Um, the question was that you, you're here because of the unnecessary permits. Did you operate this summer without the permits? We were told we had a special permit to operate this past summer. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. what, what, is, what is a special permit? Um, I'm unfamiliar with the term, except maybe she meant a special use permit. Yes. Uh, and uh, this this came to us as a code case, um, and we're just trying to get them into compliance, but they've been operating without it. The right use permit, and uh, based on the PRC, there was confusion because the existing use permit, they didn't understand, didn't contain the campground aspect to it. So when we got the complaints, we looked into it more closely. And uh, instead of trying to just modify the existing use permit, we thought it would be better to bring it through the full use permit process. So okay. that's why it's before you today. Okay. Yeah, we, we've done nothing but improvements from the, when we first applied for the permits. Because I guess the pandemic hit, we had people that were representing us they got sick or they or they no, or no longer working so we just have been I mean I've been told that we had a special permit to operate and um, we had a um, county man come through and he told us that we didn't what we looked into it we've been we've been complying with any anything we can with all of our taxes and all our fines are paid um, we, we go above and beyond trying to keep it where it, it is a functioning camp it's it's a wonderful place i love it it's my purpose <laughs> okay thank you all right thank you. <clears throat> anyone else would like to speak here uh sir we have a um, bennett sultan on zoom wanting to speak okay he said he's the applicant he's an app he's the applicant yes okay yes put go ahead sir Okay, uh, sir, can you hear me all right? Uh, yes, sir, please provide your name and address and for the record. Yes, uh, to, the, to the board and, and uh, meeting today, I appreciate the time. My name is Bennett Bolton. Uh, address is 152 Henry Street, San Francisco, California. I also maintain some residence in uh, the state of New York. Uh, so I, I really appreciate uh, Carrie's uh, presentation. She's been with, uh, the campground since the onset um, since the beginning days when uh, we purchased the land uh, as a part of uh, when the last the previous motel owners uh, sold the property and ancillary three parcels uh, which we purchased that immediately surround uh, the motel. Uh, I guess I'll keep my uh, portion brief uh, because I think uh, and I appreciate that Carrie already covered a lot of uh, points in there. Um, in, in essence, you know, Carrie is the heart and soul of this business. Uh, she is there day in, day out as a caretaker. Uh, and I can't, you know, I, I do thank her very often. But uh, really, I think it's not only me that appreciates her, but our guests. And I think uh, even a lot of the opposition, when they state their goals or their motivation for what they state, I think Carrie has that in mind. She offers uh, to be a caretaker not only for the private land, the, the camp business um, that we aspire to have uh, there, but also for the surrounding nature. Um, and as uh, you know, she attested to, and, and she has a uh, photograph showing, you know, we, we love that guests can kind of live in, in harmony with uh, uh, the, the native uh, species, you know, be it squirrels that run around or 
abundant number of uh, birds that you know uh, take residence up on the property uh, right alongside us. Uh, so I guess to step back and you can cut me off, uh, I guess if I go over, please uh, do. Um, really fell in love with this property immediately uh, when I when I first uh, viewed it. This was back in uh, March 2020, so this was onset of COVID. Everyone remembers that month uh, vividly, usually. Um, and uh, the site, though, was full of trash, a lot of hazardous leftover building materials, and immediately we went to work, uh, cleaned up. Uh, the leftover building materials was from the original construction of the motel uh, that they dumped over on, on this side. Uh, there was a barbed wire that ran some 8,000 feet, I mean, uh, maybe 2,000 feet in circumference, but, um, but you know, a couple, a couple extra runs of it run here and there. Uh, I personally still have some scars from removing the barb, uh, and nearly all of it is gone now. Uh, we've added other types of uh, fencing, um, uh, temporary uh, stuff as well, um, but aesthetically, just I uh, was very annoyed uh, that there was all this barb to protect the property from trespassers, and uh, you know, it both aesthetically wasn't pleasing, um, and uh, it was just we thought a hazard to uh, the, um, the people who would, who would come there and as well as animals. Uh, so I, I guess also would mention the previous owners handed us plans for a trailer camp to fit some, you know, 40 plus trailer hookups, which they had actually been planning before they decided to uh, sell the property. I felt that after doing some research, these mobile units or other uh, camping sites that allow uh, trailer camping really do destroy uh, properties over time, and that's the essence of the scenic and wild um, element of what we were going for. In fact, that was kind of our number one guest complaint, is that you can't pull up to your campsite uh, and some walking is required. But we have not budged on this, and I won't allow the beautiful rugged landscape to be trampled on for you know, this short-term commercial gain, uh, which would really destroy the property. That same summer of 2020, I was approached by Lucian, longtime owner of SoCal Rafting, hence the name that we assigned to this business, the SoCal Camp, to be in combination uh, with the, the campground and the rafting business. Uh, he no longer wished to run it, given the burdens of restrictions of COVID at the time, and also the challenging state of hiring and managing the seasonal, seasonal workforce. Our goal was and remains, you know, scenic and wild, and that is aligned one-to-one -one with our business objectives, like Harry said to do. Another example to paint that really clearly, we have two public campgrounds nearby. When I walked around them, they are barren, and I could choke from the fine ground uh, dust once held uh, down by native plants, shrubs, or grass, particularly riparian vegetation along the Kern River. Our section, if you look at satellite image or bird eye view, it's the only green one in that mild vicinity. Uh, our 800 feet of river frontage has some 20 feet unblocked by the thick brush and trees and can, I, can allow you to access the river. Meanwhile, the public campground, one immediately at our south and the one about 800 uh, feet north of our property, uh, uh, is, it's, it's embarrassing uh, when you walk, walk there. You can enter at every single point on the water. Every single plant has been uprooted. Um, to mention thank, the last, Mr. Last Silk, thing about thank the you, Mr. Silk, and your, okay. your your time is uh, you're well past your your time. Can you summarize this up so we? The the let the the summary really is uh, I've I've gone through uh, the letters of dissent and the merit of them, and I, it saddens me to to read this because a lot of them have been even uh, business associates or you know other businesses that we've actually uh, financially supported or given business to over time. So it's saddened to feel. They, they didn't approach us directly. Um, but what they've argued for, we felt, was either, uh, you know, some, some argument that's two years and in, in, uh, it dated. Uh, but uh, moreover, uh, it, we, we share their same ambition to uh, preserve and protect uh, the wildlife and, and, and rugged nature of the area. And it's, like I said, consistent with our business uh, and our, our interests. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else would uh, like to make comments on this issue, either for or against? Do we have anyone else on Zoom? We have no one else on Zoom. Uh, see, seeing uh, <clears throat> no one, and I will close the public testimony portion. 
of this hearing and move back to the uh, commission for discussion. Russell, did you have more to add, sir? No, I, I, I just wanted to advance the slide because that's the uh, the motion. Okay. Any any comments here from? Uh, through the chair, yes. <clears throat> um, staff would like the opportunity before you make a decision to respond to the comments. Uh, we got new comments, uh, so we want to put those in the record, uh, okay. especially since the comments do regard CEQA in some cases, um, and there's uh, quite a few comments to respond to. So I would suggest, in addition we, to the yeah. explanation that Mr. That Garrett after, gave, yes. Okay, uh, go ahead. Uh, so uh, it, and. and in a more de detailed fashion. Uh, Russell did a great job with our, um, creating the substantial evidence in this notice of exemption. It, it does uh, talk to each one of the resources, but uh, we want to make sure that the we address those in the community and you know where this project fits in relationship to their, their comments. So the suggestion would be to continue it to uh, date certain. Uh, okay, we can do that. January 26th. 25th, sorry. I'll make that motion to continue it to a time certain. January, was it 25th, you said? 25th. 25th. Bill Whitlatch. Will there be a further mo notification for these people, or is this no, we'll, unnotified? It, we won't notify them. Uh, we will incidentally notify them when we we'll respond <coughs> to all these comments, uh, so we'll have responses in the record. Um, and, uh, but no, we won't uh, officially re-notice this project. Okay. But they, by email, they'll, if they emailed us, they'll be notified. Well, I'm sorry, did I have a second? Wayne Millie's all second the motion. Roll, roll, this is a roll call for the uh, extension, uh, or the continuance to uh, January what? 25th. 25th, 2023. Roll call. Millie's? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed 5 to 0. Okay. We'll visit this next year. <laughs> okay. Hello, Dean. Good morning. Moving on to item 5B, which is a special use permit uh, number PP. PSB 22-098, this would be for Samuel Cortez, and David Alexander is our contact. Go ahead, David. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners. Name's David Alexander, Planner 3 with RMA. And before you right now is a categorical exemption and conditional approval of PSP 22-098 uh, to allow a contractor storage yard submitted by Samuel Cortez on approximately one acre of a 3.6 acre parcel for the storage of air conditioning equipment in the AE-10 exclusive agriculture 10 acre minimum zone. This is the vicinity map. Um, the subject site is located within the Rural Valley Lands Plan with the land use designation of Valley Agriculture, located at 23701 Avenue 196 in Strathmore. These are the aerial and existing zoning maps. Um, a project review committee, PRC 22-008, uh, was approved for the applicant to submit a special use uh, permit application on April 7th, uh, 2022. Um, the subject site um, contains a residence, a domestic well, and a septic system, as well as um, accessory structure. Uh, the County Environmental Health Services Division, the County Public Works Engineering Division, the Tulare County Fire Department, the Tulare County Building Department, Code Enforcement, and the Environmental Coordinator were all sent a consultation request. This is the site plan. Entitlement is found in section 16.2.B of the ordinance. Special use permit contractor storage yards that do not qualify as a rural home occupation pursuant to section 15, subsection A, paragraph 7C, and which do not involve any manufacturing, fabrication, or retail sales of construction material or equipment provided that the use is accessory to a non-site dwelling unit occupied by the owner of the facility. 
for a project summary, uh, the days and hours of operation will be restricted to Monday through Friday, um, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Parking is, uh, there's no on-site parking for the public and parking on the street for business purposes is strictly prohibited. A condition of approval will require a minimum six foot high solid wall or fence or evergreen hedge to screen the facility from public view. Additionally, the storage of equipment higher than uh, the six foot fence shall be prohibited. I would like to note one typo for the estimated um, trips per day. It should be 26, not 16. There are uh, nine employees, um, not including uh, the, the owner, um, which uh, occupies the residence on the property. A public notice for uh, the project was mailed to surrounding property owners and published in the Exeter Sun Gazette with the 10 day public comment period before today's planning commission. Um, <coughs> letters of opposition and uh, uh, many, uh, I would say ad additional exhibits um, were received. Um, I will note that um, all of them, though they were numerous, came from, came from one party. This ends staff report. Do you have any questions? Any questions for Dave? Okay. Thank you, David. Seeing none, I'll open up the public testimony portion of the hearing. Is there anybody who would like to start with the applicant, probably, and then uh, move on from there? Please come up, provide the name and address here. Uh, Hi. Hi, good morning. My name is Johnny Maciel. I live on 23641 Avenue 196. And this is regarding the air conditioning business that they want to open up next to our house. So you're not the applicant? No. Oh, all right. Well, we'll we can start with you. Okay. <laughs> I just Go ahead, John. Well, I just, we just heard a voice our concerns. Um, well, this, this man, when he first bought his house, he told us that he was just going to be uh, mobile, mobile, meaning that he wasn't going to receive products and things like that in, that in that nature to his house. But um, after, after he closed down his shop in Porterville, he, he moved all of his equipment, his forklifts, you know, trailers or whatever. He moved them next door where we live and he started getting a, all these shipments of air conditioners like constantly every day, like just noise, constant noise every day. And um, let me just, <laughs> it's just like, it's like constant like noise throughout the whole day. His workers are going back and forth. They don't, I mean, they start real early, 5.45 in the morning. They dump the air conditioners down on our ground next to our bedrooms. I mean, my wife works night shift and I've told them like before, you, before um, he started making the noise, the first time I told him, can you please lower down the noise next to our bedrooms? He goes, oh, right, okay, I'll, I'll do that. Like two days later, him and his workers get off work. They start, they um, unlo um, unhook their trailers. They start peeling out next to the fence because I already told them where my wife slept during the day. They'd peel out, throw rocks at the fence, and then they'll start, they'll open their doors. You know what I mean? Um, turn their music real loud and start drinking beer. And I mean, we asked him nicely to please lower his noise down next to our house. When he leaves, when he leaves from his work, his workers leave if they could please slow down. They leave peeling out. They throw their coffee cups when they come to work. You know, they use our house as a trash can. It's just constant. Okay. I think we get a pretty good picture of your situation there. Uh, anything else? I would like to add to that. Sure, go ahead. And what, add your name to uh, so identify my yourself. My name is Hope Maciel. Um, address is 2740 South Burke Street here in Visalia. Mm -hmm. I am his sister. My parents also live on the property. Um, it's approximately 2.5 acres. Um, our concern not only is um, we want him to prosper, we want our neighbor to prosper. Just the way he's going about it and is so inconvenient and unfair for the quality of life that my parents had before he moved in. There is excess rodents on the property now. Um, if it looks like a junkyard. It looks 
drive just a metal waste of heap of metal. I've videotaped them, I've watched them where they're um, unloading the waste products that they're removing from industrial parks or whatnot, and they're just grabbing them with forklifts and dumping them wherever they land, and there's just this big mass of metal everywhere. There's not just nine employees. There's, uh, I've counted the cars every time I've gone. There's no less than 15 vehicles. This is not including Sam's vans and trucks that are out there. This is, um, so when you start doing the math, there's maybe about 23 to 24 cars at a given time, including the service vehicles. This is constant traffic, including the 18 wheelers that are going there two to three times a day that sit and block the easement. My daddy's on a wheelchair. We would walk our dad twice on his wheelchair, twice a day. We asked him to please move or stop because the easement, if you look at the easement, it's even a safety issue. There is um, drainage pipes that run underneath these roads. The blacktop on the easement on that road is maybe about 12 inches thick. The drain pipe is right underneath it. The, these semis are sitting right on that. So we've talked to him about that. So that's gonna crush it. Over time, a short period of time, those are gonna get crushed. Has anyone played any <laughs> place any value on that? No, he just looks at me like I'm crazy. He told me to walk my dad on Fraser Highway. And I'm like, wait a minute, my parents have been living here for over 23 years. My dad has dementia and Alzheimer's. My brother's a victim of crime. They moved there because they want quietness. Sure. And when these gentlemen, we've, uh, when we've gone to his home to express our concerns, he laughs at us and tells us he can do whatever he wants. You know, he went in there with the full intent to fool us, to say this is a mobile service, we're not gonna have any problem, and then as soon as he settled in, he sabotaged us and took our way of living there. My dad, it cannot be outside anymore because the constant noise, the constant beeping of the forklift, the loud booms, the, uh, the way those semis just drive in. My nieces can't ride their bikes outside anymore there's just that fear of always getting hit by a vehicle. Uh, and the, the, the vehicle said, so the reason why the complaints are only coming from us is because this is uh, about four acres. It only affects my parent and my brother's property. Where he wants to put that piece of vacant land there, where he has plenty of land in the back where the warehouse is going to be, no, he wants to plot it right in front where he's He's able to advertise without putting a billboard. He uses his vehicles as billboards, free advertisement. And not only that, it's not affecting him. I have a picture here. His house is that way, way uh, first facing eastbound. He wants to put the stuff here. This is my parents' home. So now my parents are living in an industrial park. This is what they wake up to. This is what they see. And I wanna cry because I get emotional because it's, 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 it's a pride, it's a sense of pride. My parents are immigrants, they've come a long ways. This is their retirement and this is their sanctuary. And he came in here with no respect to that, no respect how it was going to be harming our home. My dad has been in tears and has asked him to I think we got it. Thank he you. has refused to listen to All right. So this okay. is where, this is like our, our home for our this is our gathering point. All right. I, I think we've got a pretty good idea of the impact on you on that. Yes. I appreciate that. Thank you. You bet. Okay, thanks, you guys. Appreciate now, is, is the applicant at, here? That's the same one we have. Yeah, I believe that's the same one we have. Is the applicant here? Carlos, do you want it? No, I have it. Okay. I, do, I do not believe so, no. I already have it. <coughs> Usually we don't give these back, but. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to uh, on this item? Pretty clear to me. Seeing none, I'm going to close the public testimony portion and move back to the commission for discussion. Well, I, for, I for one would have liked to have the applicant here, that's for sure. Yeah. David, uh, on, this, on this photo, is the uh, applicant Applicant's house on the left? Yeah. 
It's on the right. I, I haven't seen that photo. I think it's on the right. Is it on the right? Because they said it's going to be between Where's that house. Valley Road is right. Okay. Yeah. Fraser Valley Road is right there. All right. I think it's the applicant that is on the left. Okay. What's on the left? What, uh, I, yeah. No, no, we're okay. I think we got, we're, we're got it. House. So this house is right next to the road. So there's, um, there's a little bit of a difference. Excuse me, Chair. So in your picture, it, it, to, in, to the chair on your picture, the applicant's house is on the right. And you can see the parcel that's included. So it's next to, as she just pointed out. I see. Yeah. Okay. And this is their house. So right. they're like right next. Right. Okay. And not only did they do <coughs> that, they added livestock there on top of all the garbage. And it's a hot mess. Good. Yeah, so he, he yeah. cleared all this out here. The warehouse is back here. That, that. He could have cleared it out back here and, and got the tire there. But he put it right smack in the front. He took the trees out yeah. with and no just going to build a warehouse. So. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, what's the pleasure here? Well, I'd like to make a motion if everybody's done. Uh, yeah, I, I'm ready for a motion. I'd like to make a motion, Bill Whitlatch, that we move to deny and direct staff to prepare findings for denial to be brought back as at a future hearing or subsequent hearing. So it was a motion to deny. This is Wayne no, Miller's all second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second for a denial. Uh, roll call. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion for denial, five to zero. Uh, now this can be uh, uh, appealed. Uh, well, we're gonna, we're gonna come back with findings per the uh, <clears throat> condition of that motion. Oh, that's true. And we have then, to have some findings. Yes. So okay. we'll be back at the next right. meeting with the findings. And All right. then we'll move well. forward from there. Does the opponent understand what we just did? Do you understand? Yeah. Ma'am? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, 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 this, we, we've um, uh, voted for a denial of the permit. However, we're going to have to come back with findings. We have to justify these. Uh, this this thing with findings, and then we'll come back with that. Uh, is that going to be at a at the next meeting? At the next meeting on that. Okay. That'll be Jan that'll be January 11th. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. January 11th. David. Correct. Okay. Get back on schedule here. I think we're on uh, 5C, is that right? Special use permit number PSP 22-104. Uh, it's Bernardo Gas Gasterone. Gasterone, yes. Okay, so, and uh, David uh, Alexander is our contact, so David, please explain to what we've got here. Thank you again, uh, Chairman Diaz. Um, before you now is a categorical exemption and conditional approval of special use permit number PSP 22-104 to allow an ag service establishment on three and a half acres of a 10 acre parcel um, for agricultural equipment in the AE 10 exclusive agriculture 10 acre minimum zone. And I lost my screen. The subject site is located within the Rural Valley Lands Plan with the land use designation of Valley Agriculture. Hey, located. David, can you make that bigger for old guys? Oh. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Well, uh, we're. Um, it's located at uh, 1002 Road 236 in Tarabella. And we'll wait to bring up the vicinity map. <laughs> While we wait for that, I'll continue with uh, Project Review Committee number PRC 22-052 was approved for the applicant to submit a special use permit application on August 18th, 2022. 
The site contains uh, two residences, a domestic well, and a septic system. The surrounding properties are zoned AE10 and RAM, Rural Residential Special Mobile Home Zone. And um, the surrounding properties contain active agriculture and scattered rural residences. And you can see here the uh, vicinity map in Terrabella, south of Porterville. And these are the aerial and existing zoning maps. The entitlement is found in section 9.55.E uh, of the ordinance because of considerations of smoke, fumes, dust, odor, and other hazards. Regardless of the other provisions of the section, the establishment and operation of the following use shall be permitted in this zone only if a use permit is first secured pursuant to the procedures referred to in paragraph B of part two of section 16 of this ordinance. Agricultural service establishments primarily engage in performing agricultural animal husbandry services or horticulture services for farmers and services to farmers and farm related activities and planting, harvesting, storage, hauling and equipment repair and maintenance. The hours of operations will um, are not set. Um, they will change throughout the year depending on what's being harvested but they will be restricted to operating um, only a one half hour before sunrise and one half hour after sunset. There's no parking for the public as the site will not be open to the public and adequate parking is provided for employees and deliveries. Um, the applicant stated there's no other employees besides himself. This will be for um, agricultural equipment storage. Um, and they, um, during the height of, uh, of different um, harvesting uh, seasons, there would be an estimated 28 trips per day, but that's not year round. And they're um, asking to use three and a half acres of the 10 acre parcel. The subject site is not under a Williamson Act land conservation contract. A public notice for the project was mailed to surrounding property owners and published in the Exeter Sun Gazette with a 10 day public comment period before today's planning commission. Uh, no comments were received. The Sun staff report. Do you have any questions? Questions for Dave? I don't see any. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. <clears throat> this time we're going to open up the public testimony for uh, uh, this portion. Uh, is there anybody that would like to? Uh, is the applicant here by chance? I did not see him, no. Okay. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to speak in uh, either for or against this project? Do we have anybody on Zoom or anything? We have no one on Zoom All for right. this project. Well, seeing none, we'll, we'll close the public testimony and come back to the commission for discussion. <clears throat> Commissioner Aleman, uh, I motion to approve a categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulation Section 15303, Class 3 pertaining to new construction or conversion of existing structures and conditionally approved special use permit number PSP 22104. Bill Whitlatch, I'll second that motion. Roll call, please. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed 5 to 0. Okay, we're moving on to uh, item 5D, five, five, uh, the special use permit PSP 22 113. This would be Elizabeth Johnson for. T-Mobile and David is again our contact. Go ahead. Thank you again, Chairman Diaz. Um, before you now is a categorical exemption and conditional approval of a special use permit number PSP 22-113 to allow a new 50-foot tall monopole wireless facility with associated equipment 
on an 800 square foot portion of a 4.88 acre parcel in the A1 agricultural zone within the Woodville urban development boundary. This is the vicinity map. The subject site is located at 16548 Road 168, Woodville, California. These are the aerial and existing zoning maps. A project review committee number PRC 22-051 was approved for the applicant to submit the special use permit application on June 28, 2022. The um, subject site uh, contains agriculture and uh, residents. The County Environmental Health Services Division, the County Public Works Engineering Division, the Tulare County Fire Department and Building Department, Code Enforcement and the Environmental Coordinator were all sent a consultation request. This is an uh, overview of the site plan. Entitlement is found in section 16.2.B uh, of the ordinance. Uh, radio, microwave, television, and cell towers are allowed in all zones. Special use permits are required for all towers over 75 feet in height and are uh, required for um, any towers within the urban development boundary. And this being within the uh, Woodville urban development boundary necessitated the special use permit for the height of 50 feet. Um, the last thing I'll add is uh, currently uh, what's projected for this tower would be 4G and broadband. Um, a public notice for the project was mailed to surrounding property owners and published in the Exeter Sun Gazette with a 10 day public comment period before today's planning commission. No comments were received. Um, do you have any questions for myself or a uh, representative for T-Mobile, which should be on Zoom? Any questions? No? Well, then I'll open up the public testimony portion. Is there anybody who would like to uh, provide testimony on this item? We have someone on Zoom, right? We have someone on Zoom. Can you hear me? There you go, ma'am. Go ahead. Oh, there we go. Please provide okay. your name. Please. <laughs> this is uh, the chairman, uh, Dios. Uh, would you pl provide your name and uh, address for the record, please? Yes. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. My name is Liz Johnson. I represent T-Mobile. My address is 3140 Gold Camp Drive, number 30, Rancho Cordova, 95670. And I'm here today to answer any questions you may have. Uh, yeah, just a uh, Quick one now, David said this was for 4G and uh, broadband uh, use. Is that is that the is that the case? Yes, and and all current technologies. Would, will will you be the sole operator, or would would there be uh, other individuals using this? Currently, T-Mobile will be at the top elevation of the the tower, but it is available for co-location for any other carriers that who are interested. Thank you. Any other questions? I don't see any other questions, uh, Ms. Johnson. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Do we have anyone else on, on Zoom? We have no one else on Zoom. Okay. Seeing none, we'll close the public testimony portion and move back to the commission for a discussion or a motion. Wayne Millie, so I'll make a motion that we approve a categor ex categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act, the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulation Section 15303, Class 3 pertaining to new construction or conversion of existing structures, and conditionally approve special use permit number PSP 22-113. Commissioner Alamano, second. Roll call, please. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed 5 to 0. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item E is uh, general plan amendment number GPA 19-005, zone change number 19-015. This would for, for the Reed Trust. And who do we have here for our contact? Oh, Mr. Prozbilski. The man with no bowels. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Oops, sorry. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. My name is Chuck Przybilski. Before you today, I have General Plan Amendment 19005 and a Zone Change Amendment 19005, as Mr. Diaz mentioned. <clears throat> So just a brief overview of the particular project. Uh, we received their general plan amendment from uh, the Reed Family Trust. They are located at the northwest corner of Avenue 392 and Road 12, right near State Route 99 and just south of the city of Kingsburg. It's 15.7 acres and it's a currently in agricultural production. The site lies within the, King, uh, the county's Kingsburg community plan area However, there is a small portion that does lie outside of that boundary and therefore the general plan amendment to include that portion. The site is also zoned A1 and AE20, which these maps will show. Uh, this is the location. You can see it just south of the city of Kingsburg on the northern border of the county. Uh, this map shows the aerial photo. You can see it's currently in agricultural production. The blue line that you see on this particular photo is the urban development boundary for the Kingsburg Community Plan of the county. You can kind of see in that map there's a slight area of the portion of the parcel that is outside, kind of where the, uh, the line, um, the bubble shows. And there'll, there'll be some other maps also, but that is the portion of the uh, general plan amendment to include the entire parcel within the UDB of the uh, Kingsburg Community Plan. There's another portion. Uh, this is the existing general plan map for the city or uh, for the uh, county. The gray area, it's all general plan amendment mixed use, which allows a variety of types of uses to go into the site. And again, you can see the little five acre portion outside of there. This is the existing zoning. Uh, A1's in yellow and AE20 is in green. Uh, you can see the parcel was split many different ways between zoning and land use and this particular application will uh, alleviate all those boundary changes and make it conform with the parcel itself. So the project is a request to change the UDB of approximately five acres to be included within the Kingsburg Urban Development Plan. This will change the land use of the five acres to mixed use as the remainder is already mixed use. The zone amendment of the entire parcel will change from A1 and AE20 to M1 light manufacturing. Currently, there is no specific development plan for the site. The applicant does intend to develop the site as light industrial uses with some commercial aspects. Uh, Mr. Lauren Reed, uh, the applicant, wanted to put his office building for his, I think, I believe it's a packing uh, area. He was gonna put his office space on this particular property and he still may do that in the future. This is the proposed general plan map. You can see the boundary is now included and it's all gray as mixed use. So it conforms now, Chuck, with the rest of the Areas. The, the entire, saying? that's correct, the yeah. entire parcel, no more cutting lines and, you know, right. splitting parcels, different things. Uh, there will be the new zoning map, which is all M1. And this is, it's not really a site plan, it's more of an illustration uh, of the particular um, parcel. Uh, but the p important thing about this map is the applicant is working with Caltrans and the city for the interchange project that may come at some time in the future. So you can see the little bend at the north end of the uh, project site, and that is 
Caltrans Alternative 6 at the moment. So they are basically including one of the alternatives for Caltrans, the preferred alternative for the city, inside the project already. Uh, I just wanted to show that portion. So the county is working on the Kingsburg Community Plan at this time. And as a part of that plan, they're working on a tax sharing agreement with the city of Kingsburg. And as a part of this agreement, uh, and as such of this agreement, the, uh, this parcel will become a part of the Kingsburg Community Plan in its entirety and part of the tax sharing agreement. As such, we were requiring the applicant to not protest any tax sharing agreement between the city and the county. They will become a part of that tax sharing agreement if facilities, um, public, if Kingsburg serves the Kingsburg area plan with the, with the community facilities district or such, the applicant will be required to join that facility district. The city consultation, uh, the county and the city has had numerous meetings with the city of Kingsburg um, and other agencies, of course, uh, regarding the interchange alternatives, but also the public services. Um, one of the aspects of it, which I'll go over later, is the city may provide water, as the Selma Kingsburg Fowler Service District may provide wastewater for the project, the city may provide police. That will all become apparent in the tax. That's why they're not protesting the tax sharing agreement. <laughs> Anyways, so there are several conditions the city required that they should be subject to the city of Kingsburg site plan review process. They will build to the city of Kingsburg development standards and they're limited to the uses currently permitted in the city of Kingsburg light industrial zone. And it, it's pretty similar to our uses. So uh, it's, it's kind of a, a mix. And the applicant will enter into a development agreement with the county to comply with all the above uh, requirements that we just discussed. So there was a few changes. Uh, this, these are just show, this slide just shows the development agreement conditions. What's important for this particular uh, slide is there were some additions uh, after you got the particular packet. Uh, essentially the red lines itself so on slide uh, condition number 13 it is development slash building standards just to make more of a, a clear definition of that on number 14 uh, the addition is the county will submit the application to the city and basically uh, the developer will be required to attend and that's what it says and the any conditions made by the city uh, committee will be made conditions of approval for the project. So those are the additions for the recommendation itself. So water and wastewater. It is expected that the development will receive wastewater services from SKF, Selma Kingsburg Fowler Sanitation District, and water service provided by the city of Kingsburg. However, being in the county. If the city or SKF are unable to provide the sanitation and water services, the applicant may use alternative methods to serve the property, such as septics and individual well systems. The Road 12 interchange, as I was discussing earlier, Caltrans is anticipating improvement of the uh, interchange at 99 and Road 12. They submitted a draft interchange feasibility study at this time, they're still discussing the alternatives. And based on preferred alternative six, which is the city of Kingsburg preferred alternative at this time, the applicant has redesigned the project to accommodate this in its design. And as a condition of approval, the applicant will be required to work with Caltrans and the city regarding the interchange itself. So California Environmental Quality Act, a mitigated negative declaration, uh, concluded that this industrial park project would not would result in a less than significant impact. The planning commission, uh, sorry, the planning, the planning division also prepared a, an erratum to the MND, and this basically discussed the water and wastewater from the city and SKF, that if they were unable to provide, then septics and water, uh, water wells would be okay. 
Mitigation measures, there are several biological mitigation measures. Uh, they're pretty typical, uh, pre-site construction surveys, uh, fencing around any and uh, any uh, species, special species status that may be found on the site. Cultural, there's three cultural ones and those are pretty typical. It also, if any archeological or paleontological resources are found, then they would also have to uh, protect those. So I have a recommendation, the Planning Commission, as a general plan amendment and zone amendment, this is a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors. We recommend that the, uh, the Planning Commission recommend approval of the MND. Also recommend approval of the general plan amendment and zone change as discussed with the additions. And recommend that the Board of Supervisors approve the development agreement between the Reed Family Trust and the County of Tulare. I do believe the City of Kingsburg is online. They said they were going to be online and also the applicant. This concludes staff presentations. And Any questions for uh, Chuck? Guess not. Thank you, Chuck. I'll open up the public testimony portion of this hearing. Um, who do we have first on line here on the Zoom? Okay. Hi, is there anyone online that would like to comment on this project? No one? Okay, seeing none, then we will close the public testimony portion and Move back to the uh, commission for a discussion and, and a, these are there's three items. It looks like these are all recommendations, right? That's right. Okay. I'm ready to make a motion if there's no other input from the planning Go commission. Go ahead, sir. Okay, we have three motions. First motion is recommend approval to the Board of Supervisors that the mitigated negative declaration, initial study, and et cetera. SCH number 20, uh, excuse me, 202101075 for the reindustrial project consistent with California Environmental Quality Act and state secret guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulations. So it's a motion to approve. Wayne Miller is all second that motion. Roll call. Millies. Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion, motion passed 5 to 0. <coughs> Make a second motion that we recommend to approve Board of Supervisors uh, of the General Plan Amendment GPA 19 005 and Zone Men Amendment <coughs> PZC 19015. Wayne Millie's all second that motion. Uh, just to clarify, sorry, um, with the amendment as discussed. With, with the, the amendment as discussed. Thank okay. you. Wayne Millie's all second that motion with amendment. Roll call. Millie's? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed 5 to 0. The next motion would be recommended the Board of Supervisors to approve a development agreement between Reed Family Trust and the County of Tulare for compliance with the City of Kingsburg zoning restrictions, site plan development standards, develop impact fees, develop restrictions, land use entitlements, SR 99 slash Mendocino interchange proposed. 
Wayne that. Millie's out. Second that motion. Roll call. Millie's? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Thank you, Jack. Is there anybody besides me would like a 10 minute senior break? You old guys, we got to make right. a break for we're, you. We're going to recess for 10 minutes. We'll reconvene at uh, 1040. Thank you for your consideration. <laughs> Since my surgery, I feel much better. <laughs> Well, this is moving along faster than I thought, so we might be, be home by dinner. You know, last year we had the same amount of rain and, that, and it stopped. So I hope it doesn't happen this year. We actually have a little bit more, 150%. We always start off with a huge And it's cold. Well, the mountains are getting pretty good. Five feet of snow at China Peak. Wash your hands? Yes, I did, oh, sir. Good. Very clearly. With soap, too. Mm. You had bronchitis? Yeah. How long? I uh, had it for about um, three weeks. Yeah. Well, and, uh, so I went in and got some medication, and that kind of knocked it off. But that dog on dry cough sticks with you, you just can't catch that. <coughs> well, you know, I had a COVID test on, on December. on Demarie, the, the emergency mm -hmm. walk-in. Right. He said, uh, no flu, no flu, COVID. No, oh, jeez. <laughs> How could I have it one? He said, oh, you had this a week before that at least. Yeah. You, you, you had contacted it. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. It's not like one of these where you just you got walk it. in and somebody gives it to you. Right. So, I mean, so, there's an incubation period, right? So I had, <coughs> I had this uh, cough, ra a raspy cough. But that was it, and I had a little fever, and you know you're tired. That's been it. So they said uh, quarantine for five days, and then uh, you can come out after five, but you have to wear a mask for another five. <coughs> That's cool. But I haven't, I haven't been out. This is my first time out. Second time. 
I had it back in January, and I just had a terrible sore throat. You do have it. Yeah, it's January. And then uh, I thought, man, my throat's sore. So I like cognac. So I got a glass out, and I put it up to my nose, and it usually takes your breath away. It's like, no smell. <laughs> Took a drink, burned like hell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing. I couldn't smell or taste. so confused on the vaccinations I I'm not going to get the next one um, I got I got my pneumonia vaccine did you guys get your I got that and I got the flu shot yeah, too got, both got the, the flu, flu shot, shot yeah. got all the boosters got the COVID shot and the the one if you've had chicken pox you know, oh, shingles shingle yeah. shot shingles got that. it's good for every, the new one's much better is that so, right yeah you want to get the new one. Well, that doesn't keep you, that just gives you a mild, that doesn't stop it, does it? It, it stops just, it. It stops it, huh? Yeah, right. I just thought maybe you had a milder case. No. No. The second one was more powerful. Yeah, I haven't, had, I've never had shingles, but my wife, boy, she's just plagued by Oh, and when you get it, it's too late. Yeah. So, yeah. No, she got the shot, too. Oh, she did? Yeah. The first shot or the second one? No, the first one. Oh, okay. The earlier one, yeah. The Supposed second to, one is... It's much better, huh? Yeah, my doctor's son, he called us right away. He says, get it, get it. So oh, I see. And you can get it at the pharmacy just like you got the rest. Sure. Right? I'll have to talk to her about that. <clears throat> I think she can get it, too. So. <laughs> we ready? Might as well. I'll call these guys in. Uh, Wrap hey, your... Hey, guys. Uh, looks like we're all back here. We'll, we'll consider... Well, Arizazu, I think. Okay. And our contact on this is uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Roper. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, Sandy. Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> I've known him for 30 years, even in Kings County, and I pull, pulled a blank on him. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. Uh, Sandy Roper, uh, Chief Planner with the Special Projects Division of the uh, Resource Management Agency. And uh, before you today for consideration is uh, zone variance number PZV22-032. Uh, the applicant is uh, Raul Aranzazu. And I uh, apologize if I didn't pronounce it correctly. And... As far as... Okay, now it went. Okay. Um, the zone variance request to allow uh, the zone variance to facilitate a division of land to allow a parcel that's already less than the 40 acre minimum to be divided into four parcels that are each five acres in size in the AE40 or exclusive <laughs> agricultural 40 acre minimum zone. Uh, the project is located at 39007 Road 140, Cutler, California, on assessor's parcel number 035-160-003. Uh, again, the project site is uh, 20 acres in size and contains a house, four mobile homes, and various outbuildings. Uh, the four mobile homes are part of uh, employee housing. Uh, the soils on the site are Seville clay, uh, class three and uh, which is rated severe uh, for sewage disposal with a high shrink cell poten swell potential. 
Uh, surrounding properties are zoned AE40 and AE20 and contain row crops, orchards, and scattered rural residences. The site is not restricted by a uh, Williamson Act contract and access to the site is direct to road 140. On the screen now is the location and ownership map. Um, the site is labeled and the adjacent parcels that touch the project site are shaded and uh, the owners of the shaded parcels were mailed public hearing notices and the public hearing notice was, uh, was published on uh, November 30th of 2022. Uh, the vicinity map shows the location of the project at uh, 39007 Road 140, Cutler, California. On the screen now is the uh, assessor's parcel map um, and the project site is highlighted with yellow. Uh, and uh, you know, when you take a look at the APN page, um, you know, please note the uh, number of parcels that are smaller than 40 acres. Uh, on the screen now is an aerial photograph which, uh, you know, shows the 20-acre parcel and you can see the existing structures in the southeast uh, corner of the property with the existing house and the four mobile homes. And at this point, there's one point of access uh, to Road 140. Uh, there is a canal that runs along the east side of uh, Road 140, and there's one bridge that goes across the property, goes across the canal, giving access to the property. Um, the site plan uh, you know, shows that they would like to do a division in the future. Um, to have two five-acre parcels uh, north of the uh, existing structures and also a five-acre parcel west of the existing structures, but they have not got to the point of uh, hiring a surveyor to prepare a tentative parcel map, and for that reason, um, they don't have, uh, you know, the level of detail that would uh, be there if a tentative parcel map was also submitted. And uh, the reason for this is the applicant is uh, seeking approval of the zone variance to find out, um, you know, if it is going to be approved before spending the money to hire a surveyor and spend tens of thousands of dollars to prepare a tentative parcel map. Um, you know, in the event that the zone variants were not to be approved, then they would not be out the cost of the tentative parcel map. So that's the reason why they're waiting for uh, having a tentative parcel map prepared. On the screen now is an aerial image which shows a wider view and, uh, you know, Within a half mile radius of the property, there are 50 parcels that are less than the 40 acre minimum parcel size. Concerning uh, general plan consistency, uh, the subject site is located outside any urban area boundaries and is subject to the Rural Valley Lands Plan with the land use designation of Valley Agriculture. The existing land use would not change with this division of land. Uh, the, you know, if the zone variance is approved, the future tentative parcel map would be consistent with the relative uh, relevant policies of the Tulare County General Plan. Uh, Concerning zoning consistency, the subject site is zoned AE40, which allows intensive and extensive agricultural uses, plus one single family residence or mobile home for the entire contiguous property per zoning ordinance section 9.7. Such residences shall be occupied only by an owner or a lessee and family. In addition, one additional residence or mobile home is allowed for each 20 acres in the entire property and shall be occupied only by relatives of the owner or lessee, by farm workers or by employees who work on the property. Other additional residences may be allowed with approved use permits. Uh, section 16 of the Tulare County Zoning Ordinance um, as amended authorizes the filing of uh, variance applications when practical difficulties, unnecessary hardships, or 
results inconsistent with the general purpose of the ordinance result through uh, strict and literal interpretation and enforcement of the provisions thereof. The commission is authorized to hold hearings and make decisions on applications for variances uh, except when environmental, when an environmental impact report is required according to Board of Supervisors resolution 76-3034, which was effective November 9, 1976, and was amended uh, by resolution 78-1902, effective July 5, 1978. In order to approve the variance, uh, the following findings are required to be made. Uh, practical difficulties and necessary hardships or results inconsistent with the general purpose of the article would result through strict and literal interpretation and enforcement of this article with respect to the proposed improvements. Factors that support this finding in it are in italics as follows. Um, uh, for the first one, uh, there are special circumstances applicable to the property involved, including size, shape, topography, location, or surroundings, so that strict application of the zoning ordinance deprives the property owner of privileges enjoyed by other property in the vicinity and under identical zoning classifications. Uh, the staff response would be that the project proposes to allow the division of 20 acres into four parcels that are each five acres in size in the AE40 zone. Uh, the project site is in an area where several small rural residential parcels are clustered. And as I was saying earlier, within a half mile radius of the project site, 50 parcels currently exist in configurations of less than the 40 acre uh, <coughs> minimum parcel size in the AE40 zone and strict application of the zoning ordinance would deprive the applicant of the you know, privilege that all of the uh, other property owners are enjoying, uh, you know, especially the uh, other 50 within a half mile radius that are less than 40. Uh, the second finding that the granting of the variance will be subject to such conditions as will assure the adjustment thereby authorized shall not constitute a grant of special privilege inconsistent with the limitations upon other properties in the vicinity and a zone in which the property is situated. Um, again, the staff response would be that it would not be a grant of special uh, privilege inconsistent with the limitations upon other property in the vicinity because within the half mile radius, again, there are 50 parcels that are currently existing that are less than the 40 acre minimum in the AE40 zone. Uh, the uh, strict application would deprive the property owner of this privilege that's being enjoyed by the other property owners in the vicinity under identical zoning classification. Uh, the third finding would be that the variance will not authorize a use or activity which is not otherwise expressly authorized by the zone regulations governing the parcel of uh, property. Uh, the subject project property is located in an agricultural zone uh, AE40, uh, section 9.7D of the zoning ordinance pertaining to division of land allows divisions of land in the AE40 zone. In addition, section 15D2F and G, uh, division of land exceptions allow divisions of land that create home site parcels. Any use that is proposed to be established in the future would have to be established in compliance with the regulations of the AE40 zone. Uh, therefore, no other, uh, n no use not otherwise uh, expressly permitted in the zone will occur. And finally, the granting of the variance is consistent with the general plan. Uh, the property is located within the Rural Valley Lands Plan, and the land use designation is Valley Agriculture. And uh, Resource Management Agency staff having performed a review of the project side and have determined that the current land use designation in which the variance shall be granted is, co is a compatible use with smaller than permitted parcel creation and the uh, granting of the variance is consistent with the general plan. Uh, the site is not restricted by a Williamson Act contract. A uh, consultation notice was sent to the uh, RMA Building Division, Code Compliance Division, Environmental Coordinator, uh, RMA Flood Permits, the Subdivisions Division, RMA Public Works, 
uh, HHSA Environmental Health Services Division, uh, the Fire Department Assessor, and the Tulare County Surveyor's Office. Um, I would like to note that uh, I did receive a telephone call on uh, December the 7th from Shirley Tracy, and uh, she lives uh, approximately at the northeast corner of the project site um, on the east side of Road 140, and she also has a uh, parcel of land um, directly north of the project site that contains an orchard. And uh, she called to inquire about the project and said that she was concerned about mobile homes possibly being installed on future parcels. She was also concerned about people trespassing on her family's citrus orchard and talked about past uh, trespassing issues. Um, I would note that the uh, trespassing issues that uh, she was talking about, um, the way she described it, uh, she was talking about like kids on motorcycles and ATVs. Um, she also asked about access for the future parcels to Road 140. And uh, you know she was uh, talking about the canal that runs along the west side of Road 140 with an existing bridge providing access to the project site. And she was asking if uh, each of the future parcels uh, would also have their own bridge um, or would all the parcels uh, utilize the existing bridge. And uh, I did explain to her that at this point, uh, land division application had not been submitted and uh, you know, gave her the same rationale that I explained to the commission earlier. Um, and um, I also explained that uh, you know, she could ask those questions at the meeting today. Um, and the applicant had indicated that they would be uh, participating by telephone. Um, you know, so we may be able to, you know, ask the applicant for that information um, after the staff report is complete. On the screen now is the existing zoning map, which shows the uh, AE40 zone and the AE20 zone. Uh, the AE20 zone is the uh, lighter uh, green, and the AE40 zone is the darker green, which occupies you know a little bit more than the south half of this uh, diagram and on the screen now is the site plan which shows the existing home and the four existing mobile homes and the uh, two five acre parcels that they were proposing which would be north of the existing home um, uh, notes uh, build a house on each of them and they also had a drawing of a shed and there was also uh, what they were showing as five acres uh, west of the existing uh, house and mobile homes the request would be for the Commission to hold a public hearing uh, approve a categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act and the CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Code of Regulations, Section 15301, Class 1, pertaining to existing facilities, and Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversion of small constructors. Uh, and conditionally approved zone variance uh, number PZV 22-032. Um, so the class one would apply to the zone variance and in the future if a land division was submitted um, the land division would uh, qualify for the class three exemption because each of the new parcels uh, that were uh, resulting that uh, were vacant could each have a residence constructed which would uh, qualify uh, as a ministerial project and uh, you know, building a house on a parcel uh, is exempt from environmental review. Uh, this concludes the staff report unless there are any questions. Questions for Sandy? Nope. <clears throat> Thank you Sandy. I will open up the public testimony portion of this hearing. Um, is there anybody here that would like to, is the applicant here by chance? 
Yes. Why don't you, would you? It's a, it's a nominal case. Uh, can somebody help me here? Yeah, estamos dos dueños. Ah, mi nombre es Luis Flores. Okay. Uh, 39007 Road 140 en Cutler. Okay. Yeah, nomás veníamos para saber si nos iban a poder dar el permiso para uh, hacer las parcelas. Can you help me here? Uh, is there ask him if there's any hardship issues or something that would uh, motivate or, or, or maybe shed, shed some light on what this variance coming going through? El otro dueño estaba queriendo hacer otra casa y pues no nos dan el permiso en el condado. Por eso es que estamos queriendo hacerlo para ver si podíamos agarrar para poder hacer otra casa. El otro dueño es el que. Uh -huh. A uh, little bit confused. So he does he live. Is he live in that residence there then? Yo vivo, yeah. Right. But you don't own the, you don't own the property? Si. Si, yo soy el dueño de la propiedad. So that you have a partner or who's the other? Raul es el otro dueño. Son dos dueños. Dos dueños, yeah. Raul es mi tío. Okay. Y él es, ellos, pues yo también había ido al condado si podía hacer otra casa. Uh, uh, y ya me dijeron, no, no es que uh, nomás tienes, uh, ahorita nomás puede hacer una casa. Y, y ellos también quieren hacer uh, dos casas porque son, uh, son de, las, de, de sus hijas, más bien, no es uh, casi. El, es de los dos. De los dos, o sea que uh, los dos estamos ahí en el proyecto. Can you bring us into this conversation here? <laughs> I see. Okay. All right. Got it. Uh, uh, now we now we got it. Council, did you have a comment that you wanted to make? Did we do something wrong here? No, you're, no. I'm, I'm not. Okay. Okay. Through the chair, he also mentioned that uh, you made that you wanted to do it with two daughters. All right. Yeah, he did say that. Yeah. Okay. Is there anybody else that would like to provide testimony? Do we have anybody on Zoom or anything that? Hmm. Okay. We know that for a fact, or do you want to check with her? Uh, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. um, um, the lady that is on the phone is also part of the family that is, uh, you know, part of the application. Oh, okay. Um, so she may be letting the uh, other gentleman speak for the family. I understand. Okay. If 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 they're sta satisfied with their testimony, we'll we're okay then. Okay. So I'm going to close the public testimony portion and come back to the commission for discussion on this. Um, I'll start, I guess. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't see a, a, press, a pressing reason to give a variance on the current zoning. I didn't see any hardships. It looks like they just like to do parcel splits, build more homes. Um, I think we're supposed to protect agriculture. I don't think putting more homes out there at this point in time is, well, is a good plan. I think what they're trying to do is they're going to start seeing more and more of this. Is, is oh, uh, 
I think, sorry about that, Commissioner Alamont. Um, uh, I think what you're going to do, you're going to see more and more of this is just due to the lack of housing. Mm -hmm. Families are going to start, especially with the ADUs and adding houses to um, um, uh, current properties. Um, you're you're going to see a much bigger increase uh, with this, um, just by default of these folks not being able to find other pieces. Go elsewhere. Yeah, I see yeah. where you're coming from. Um, and so, in and in, in typically, what I've heard, you know, out there is is families, just mm -hmm. families bringing them in because they can't go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Just a housing shortage. I agree with Carlos. So okay. it makes sense. We do. There is concern about mobile homes showing up out there, and then yeah. we end up like we've got done our early mark, yeah. uh, which has just been a disaster over the years. And I just don't want to go in that direction. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, um, I would point out that uh, any division of land in an agricultural zone district, um, any resulting parcels that are vacant, um, you know, could have uh, a single family uh, dwelling established on the property and the zoning ordinance does allow both stick built homes and mobile homes by right and you know so any division could you know result in either one and you know we're you know, going to have to rely on the requirements of the ordinance, and if it's allowed by right, and somebody proposes a, a mobile home, um, the RMA doesn't have the discretion to deny uh, somebody who applies for a building permit for a mobile home. Some people confuse uh, mobile homes with manufacturing housing. You know, I've I've had a license to sell those, and once they uh, connected with the foundation. Uh, there's the same as a regular house. So well, I think under what you're referring to is manufactured housing, not mobile homes. Mobile homes is something you pull your trailer. Uh, um, well, something that you pull with the trailer um, is a recreational vehicle, whether it's a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, or whether you're driving a uh, a, a motor home. Um, a mobile home, which is now commonly called a manufactured home um, under state law, uh, would have to either be installed on a state approved uh, foundation system um, as a you know, permanent engineered foundation or a state approved tie down system. Um, the ones that are on the permanent engineer foundation are assessed as real property rather than vehicles, um, but they have the ability to apply, apply for either one. And I would also note that if somebody is uh, installing uh, a unit like that on a piece of property, um, there are requirements that the unit be um, less than 10 years old and any units that are 10 years or older. Um, before they could be installed, uh, they are required to have inspections by the building division of the resource management agency, and they would have to pass the inspection before they could be installed on a piece of property. Uh, thank you, Sandy. Um, so, um, <clears throat> um, as we've talked about before, the big green brush, and it did impact a lot of uh, properties uh, by just putting AU40 on everything, which did ultimately affect the ability for housing to be built in the county. Um, <clears throat> we, we get very few requests for variances or zone changes regarding housing in this county because of that. Uh, so if there is a, a need, uh, we could have accommodated through doing a second or third residence on this, this property through the use permit, but they actually want to build, finance and build their own houses on these properties since we need to parcelize it. So that that's a request. And if you do look around the surrounding neighborhood, there is quite a quite a few five acre or smaller parcels. Um, so that would be consistent with the neighborhood. And um, so as far as I know you're concerned, as far as setting precedents, uh, like we've talked about before, we get one, two, three of these years. So I don't think we're setting 
uh, any precedence, and I don't think we're really punching a hole in the RBLP here. Um, so it's a, it's kind of these one-off cases where they are surrounded by other folks who are enjoying uh, the five acres they have. Okay. Well, my, my own, you know my comment is just that uh, allowing another parcel allows uh, one home on each one plus a mother-in-law's home and. And then we have them coming in and asking for a variance for a third home. So uh, anyway, that's just my comments. And so I'll leave it to the commission at this point in time. Anybody would like to make a motion? I'll motion. I'll, uh, Commissioner Alamon, motion to approve a categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act and state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14 California Code Regulations Section 15301, Class 1 pertaining to existing facilities in Section 15303A, Class 3, pertaining to construct new constructions or conversions of small structures and conditionally approve Zone Variance Number PZV22-032 with a Parcel Map waiver, waiver, Parcel Map required to record. I'll second that motion, Bill Whitlatch. Roll call. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? No. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed 4 2 1. Okay, thank you. All right, now we're going to item 6, which is the uh, continued public hearing. It says uh, <clears throat> to members of the public if you wish to participate in today's public com uh, comment via Zoom webinar, please enter the Zoom webinar ID. <laughs> Nine eight two seven five two eight zero five six seven and password three three nine zero seven nine. You will be connected to the boardroom to address the planning commission in the same manner as if you were here in person. Please state your name and address for the record to be heard by everyone on, in the room. Your statements will go out on a live audio stream and will be included in the auto recording of the meeting. The timer will be set to three minutes, so please adhere to the time limit. And that it concludes the instructions for today's public hearing. And this is uh, 6A general, oh wait a minute, where am I? Yeah, 6A. 6A. General plan amendment number GPA 21-001 and zone change number PZC 22-007. This is a Chase Morgan uh, application and um, looks like Mr. Bach is our Contact. Yes, uh, Chairman. Uh, uh, what are your commissioners? N not not board members today. Um, and uh, staff, um, we are respectfully requesting that we move this item to date certain, January twenty fifth, twenty twenty three. I'd be happy to make that motion, but do we have to open the public hearing or not first? Uh, I, no, you do not need to open them. Uh, no, I do not want to re-notice it. No. Right. Okay. Then I'll open. Then I need to open a public hearing. Well, to I, give think, everybody a chance, I think it's right? already open from last time. Okay. Oh but yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, it's already. It was, it was open. continued. Yes. So we never so closed it. So if you it. want to declare that we have not closed it. Yeah, that, we haven't no. closed it. Uh, we've just continued it. So there will be no notice. Will not be re-noticed. No. That's correct. Okay. Motion. Let's say something. Good morning, Mr. Chairperson, members of the commission. Uh, Paul Burnell, uh, Director of Community Development with City of Visalia, 315 East of Sequoia Avenue. Uh, staff has, uh, city staff has no um, issue with the request for continuance. Uh, we would just request that again, which the county staff has done in the past, provide us with the noticing for the item when it comes back before you next year. Good, okay. We'll Thank you, that. Paul. All right. Now I'll entertain a motion for a continuance. Wayne Millies, I'll make a motion that we continue this application to a date certain being January 23rd, 2023. January 25th. What did I say? 25th, sorry. <laughs> I heard somebody say Commissioner Alamont, second. Roll call. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed five to zero. 
Okay. Moving on to item number seven. Items for discussion and review and action. Item A is removal of Planning Commission minutes. Uh, Let's talk about yes, that. What's through, that? The, through the chair, uh, we have minutes. Um, we have recordings of all these conversations. We've been giving you paper minutes, and we talked about last year no longer doing that. That's quite an effort on staff's part uh, when uh, there's very little bang for the buck there, uh, especially when someone can just get the recording from us if they want to hear any bit of our minutes. So staff's just asking for a little bit of administrative reprieve from going through that effort every week so we won't be getting this anymore you will not be getting that anymore okay and well, therefore we couldn't make well, the mistake okay. of whether you were here or not anymore no, uh, the, one, the, the one the one thing we talk just about so all right item B is the Planning Commission calendar for 2023 that, well, the we, we did want the uh, a vote on that oh do we have is that yeah. a yeah. oh there is an action I'm sorry yeah. yes Commissioner okay. Alamon a uh, motion to approve removal of Planning Commission minutes Bill Whitlatch, I'll second the motion. Roll call. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed five to zero. No, just the minutes. Thank you. <coughs> now we can go to B, huh? Planning Commission calendar for 2023. Is this the draft that we have in front of us? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, looks like we've got just one in February for the farm show, yes. right? Okay. And then one in November and December as well. Anybody got any issues with this? Looks how about like a motion? How 12 months. How about a motion? Make a motion that we approve the proposed uh, Planning Commission calendar for 2023. Commissioner Alamont, second. Roll call. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aleman? Yes. Motion passed 5 to 0. Okay, item C is election of the Planning Commission Chair. This would be for 2023. Correct? Correct. So it's either Carlos or Taryn, right? No, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't done it before yet. Yeah, well, then, uh, then, then. Is, is Dennis actually the alternate, or is he? It a, is an alternate. He's the alternate, that, so that so he wouldn't be involved in it. He would not be involved. Okay. But if you so, want it, I'll nominate you. Uh, I was planning on doing it, so I think throughout the, I was vice chair, and I think it was my turn this, this year. So, uh, yeah, if you want to nominate me, I'll. I just did. Okay. <laughs> We're going to need a second. Commissioner Brown, second. Roll call for uh, Ed Diaz to be the chairman in 2023. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed 5 to 0. Okay. Item D is election of the Planning Commission vice chair for 2023. One of those two? Speak up wherever, keep your feet. I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> there you go. I'll make a motion that we nominate Vice Chair Commissioner Taron Brown. 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 I knew that. Our name too. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy. I made that motion. Uh, Taron Brown. Uh, did Did you second that too? Oh, no, no. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> Who's going to second? Second. Commissioner Alamon, mm -hmm. second. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Millies? Yes. Brown? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aliman? Yes. Motion passed 5 to 0. Okay. Well, we have our officers for next year. Very good. Where are we on this thing here? Director's report. <coughs> so not item so 8 is the director's report. Yeah. Yeah. F 59 minutes. Um, so uh, I do have a little bit of a presentation here, um, basically about our counter services. But I did want to say I did hear that McElroy is uh, stepping down. I don't have that paper in hand yet, so, but I did want to tell you, um, inform you of that. Um, so I did want to report about our counter services. We've gone a whole year without uh, 
uh, Jason now, and uh, so we're changing a, a few things up there, um, but uh, I think we got the ship uh, paddling all in the right direction. Um, so uh, really breaking down what our services did. Under uh, Jason, we expanded uh, our services quite a bit. Um, it really was uh, broken out by different divisions, but what we were able to do is start uh, in taking permits for the other divisions, including environmental health, uh, public works. They still get called down uh, to help take in applications if they're difficult, but for the most part, uh, we're, we're handling those. Um, so counter services provided, obviously, our customer service, Q&A, walk-ins, phone calls, emails, texts. And those are generally the, the questions we get on any given day. It could be as many as about 120. Uh, so it's uh, a lot of work. And some of those uh, questions that need to get answered are, you know, 20 minutes to an hour's worth of research. Uh, it's, uh, it's under 10 a day. Uh, but again, it's, it's quite, a, quite an effort uh, for, for Sammy Franks and her bunch up there. So that's just for starters, you know. Then you actually got to take in the permit and the fee. Uh, building permit applications, you got to figure out what type it is, how to break it down, the costs, um, and then the um, same with planning uh, applications. Uh, the fire permit also go, co goes along with that. Um, and so we're trying to also replace uh, Jose Sines, who was our uh, planner who took in the, the planning permits and uh, bring people up to speed and get them knowledgeable enough to the point that we don't have to go back into our planning staff, uh, grab Sandy or bring him up to the uh, counter. So that's uh, probably uh, a couple year effort at this point to get someone as knowledgeable as Jose. Um, <coughs> we obviously assist public works uh, when Krosmer permits and other uh, uh, public works permits and environmental health with water and sewer. And then we have our own zones of benefits where we take in fees. A lot of this stuff is ultimately made easier by being able to apply online. Uh, we used to get 30 to 40 payments uh, a week, and now we're probably down to about five payments that actually come into the counter for water and sewer. Um, we also take in the housing program fees, and we do the cash hearing for all the above. So this is our staff as it sits right now at the counter. Uh, Sammy's uh, taken over to a high degree for Jason, uh, Roxanna Brand is the one who does our actual planning site plan review brandy we just hired she's ultimately hopefully going to replace jose as being the planning staff who um, is able to take in those planning permits and give them numbers uh, <coughs> patricia um, basically handles a lot of the fees uh, angela is kind of our first face at the counter kind of designating what kind of project it, it is and then ultimately, if we need to get help, she's the one who calls up the help. Marisala and uh, Myra, we've kind of moved over uh, to actually doing a permit review. So they're doing uh, the solar, electrical, um, the easier permits, and uh, Myra's taking in our projects online. Um, and I'll show you some numbers here. At any given moment at this time, Myra probably has about 400 uh, permits coming in online. So she's got to give them numbers. Um, you know, we, we've looked at it, it might be as much as uh, a, a, a couple thousand that, that have come in over a couple month period, thousand a month. Um, so a lot of numbers that she's got to deal with and assign. So it's a very busy bunch is, is, is my point here. Um, <coughs> and, uh, uh, and that's kind of how we break it down by the hierarchy in the office. Um, so Samantha reports to me directly. Um, we also have a lot of subject matter, matter experts who come up often. Um, this is our, our key group, uh, Hector and Kevin on the building side, Troy and Maria on code compliance, Maria Flores has really been helping out, stepping up and going in and actually if there's a question about where our permit status is, going out and figuring that out for us. And that way we keep some of the other subject matter experts from having to answer the simpler questions. Um, so this is, is working for us right now. Uh, we do get, um, we're at a point now electronically if we are backed up in any one of these subjects, we kind of know where it's at pretty immediately. We used to have to 
dig around and find out who had the largest stack of permits to, to know where we're backing up. And now it's all electronic, so, um, well, not all electronic, but mostly electronic, so we, we do know much more quickly uh, who's in and who's out. We actually got a lot of help for fire um, for a while there. Uh, Gilbert was by himself, and if he was out of the office for a week, you can imagine that we were stacking up 100, 200 permits easily. Um, so process is fairly simple, application, review, and issuance. Um, and now we're starting to really dig into what that means and where, where things are log jamming. Um, so what we're finding out is we've really worked really hard on our review processing to a very high degree. So now some of the issues are applications and issuance, and those usually come down much more to uh, customers not doing the right things. Um, so you can see our building permits uh, since uh, Jason left us last year. It's uh, increased uh, uh, quite a bit, um, it's just the intake alone. So uh, we haven't seen any real indicators of a sl <laughs> slowdown in the market. Um, and as you can see, we're, we're keeping up, you know, uh, even though, uh, you know, we approved over 4,000 last year. We, we or two years ago, we kept up and did uh, got to the five thousand number, um, which uh, <clears throat> not certain of this yet. But uh, we're digging in to see if that's even uh, above what we were doing back in two thousand six. You know, right now, we think it is um, with all the new subdivisions we've been working on. You could already tell this year uh, we're catching up to those numbers fairly quickly. Uh, same with the planning services. Uh, the red are the uh, research projects, and those are the CEQA projects that go along with our, our planning permits. Um, you could also see an increase in that. Uh, we assign those uh, research numbers. So some of the um, projects that come back to us, I shouldn't say projects, some of the inquiries that come back to us that are more than an hour's worth of research at the counter, we do research for those as well. And they're all kind of lumped in there with our CEQA. Um, but you can see those numbers are pretty steady and, and increasing. So this is the uh, electrical permits, uh, electronic permit intake uh, versus paper. You can see uh, papers declining fairly quickly. Uh, 2023's numbers, the reason they're declining, obviously, is because we don't have all those numbers yet. Um, but you can already see they're on pace to uh, outdoing any, any of the previous years. A uh, little bit of intake on uptick on paper since the end of COVID, between our ending of COVID, 21 to 22. But uh, once we open up our uh, electronic portal to intake um, electronic payments, I, I, that number is going to go up dramatically. <coughs> um, again, as, as far as the actual uh, time or um, energy spent on electronic versus paper, uh, we're, hoping, we're steadily increasing year by year. Uh, and this year, uh, numbers aren't all, all the numbers aren't in for this year, but you could already tell our, our building permits are, are doing really well. Uh, so this is kind of a tree of the, the types of permits that are coming in. Additions or alterations, obviously largest, solar residential, uh, re-roofs, uh, et cetera. But uh, alterations by far are the largest amount of permits we're working on right now. Uh, so goals for 2023, uh, the uh, portal um, is already available so people can uh, we've been, since COVID, we've been taking a lot of permits in through email, which is not a very efficient process. So we're trying to gear people to use our Palms portal. Uh, I think there are few are reluctant because there isn't an online payment system in place yet. So that we signed the contract for yesterday. Hopefully it's another two month process. Um, we need to improve our actual permit systems usability. Uh, I think we've, uh, <clears throat> need some trainings there, but I think uh, it's really just the uh, enforcement of using it 
making people use it uh, so that all the information's in there. Because uh, if we can answer a question, I have to ask people. It's uh, really inefficient. Um, <clears throat> so we want to uh, reduce all of our overhead numbers we're getting as far as permits that have not been voided or projects that are completed that people aren't putting in the system that they're completed. So once we uh, socially engineer those problems out, um, I think we'll have a lot more uh, efficiencies. Bluebeam is actually a, a technology that allows all of us to look at a project at once instead of separate PDFs uh, procedurally. So um, the versioning won't be a problem anymore. Everybody will see the prior changes in real time. Uh, we are going to work on improving our web access, uh, increase more cross training, and develop personnel. So that's uh, my end of the year presentation. Uh, we're, we're doing well, doing great. Uh, got a lot of new staff. A lot of training's going to have to happen. Going to fumble a little bit here and there, but I think uh, our staff's good enough. And you could already tell from Emily's uh, agenda items today. She's she's got it, uh, and that that that's a quick read. Um, and then hopefully Austin starts coming up with a few projects and. Um, we got a few other staff members that we just brought aboard that we'll introduce you to, um, but all look, all that's looking pretty good for for 2023. I did want to say on the uh, Heartland Christian Camp that did get appealed to the board that the board denied the the appeal on that extension of time, so that was a, <coughs> a difficult matter. But so that's all I got for you. Well, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> That's it. That's it. Okay. Yes, Mary. Uh, item nine for the planning commission discussion items. Anything that for future agenda review? Anything? Want anything looked at? No. All right. We'll adjourn. See you next uh, year. At the board of chambers, remember that we'll be back. Oh, oh, yeah. we're going to be back at the other. Yes. Uh, excellent.